Hi, my name is Jack. I'm a flight instructor and I'm going to talk to you about five things that you must know to pass your private pilot check ride. Number one, you need to know how to explain lift to the examiner on the day of your check ride. The primary two ways you're gonna explain this are first, Bernoulli's principle, and second, Newton's third law of motion. So Bernoulli's principle is all about the concept that fluid, when it speeds up, its pressure drops. So when you apply that to air, which is a fluid flowing over and under a wing, the shape of a wing causes the air going over to flow faster, meaning the pressure drops. So you have higher pressure on the bottom, lower pressure on the top, high pressure always wants to go to low pressure, and that's your lift. So that's Bernoulli's principle. Second, you have Newton's third law of motion, which states for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if I push on a wall, my upper body is going to be pushed away from the wall. There's an equal and opposite reaction. It's the same thing with air as it impacts the underside of the wing. You're flying around with a positive angle of attack. The air is going to be deflected downwards and the aircraft will be deflected upwards. The second thing that you need to know on your check ride is adverse yaw. This is a really good gotcha question and if you can explain this and how to counteract it well on the check ride, you're setting yourself up for success. So adverse yaw, what is it? It's the initial tendency of the aircraft to yaw to the outside of a turn. So you initiate a turn to the right and the nose yaws to the left as you enter that turn. Why does that happen? The easiest way to think about this is adverse yaw induced drag. All right, so there is an imbalance of induced drag because one wing is producing more lift. You're changing the cord line of the wing with the ailerons, causing more lift on the outside wing, less lift on the inside wing. So you have more induced drag on the outside wing. This causes the yawing motion. So how do we correct this? We do it with rudder as the pilot and the manufacturer also builds some things into the airplane to help to overcome these uh, flight characteristics. So the first thing they build in is differential ailerons. So the aileron on the inside of the turn is traveling further than the aileron on the outside of the turn, causing more parasitic drag. Second, we have freeze type ailerons. This is similar, it's with the ailerons on the inside wing, the lower wing. The leading edge is jutting out into the airstream just a little bit to add a tiny bit of parasitic drag on that wing as well. So those are the most common ones that you'll find on like a Cessna 172 or a Piper Archer, but you also have spoilers like you'd find on an airliner, and then you have uh, controls that are linked together where the rudder and the ailerons are linked together so you turn and it's adding rudder for you all right so after adverse yaw you need to be able to decode a METAR and a TAF okay so let's go ahead and go through one together we're gonna throw it up on the screen so this is a METAR that's the type of report it is KRBD is the airport identifier. That would be Redbird or Dallas Executive Airport. 280753Z is the 28th day of the month and then 753 Zulu time. So those first two digits there are always the month and the second four are always the time Zulu. Auto, that means it's an automated report. 19011KT, that's 190 degrees at 11 knots, the wind. 10 statute miles is your visibility. CLR means that the skies are clear, there's no cloud layers. 28-22 is your temperature in Celsius and your dew point in Celsius. A2982 is your altimeter setting for your non-standard pressure. Now we have a remarks section, RMK. First remark is A02, that means that the airport has the ability to differentiate between different types of precipitation. So it can tell not only if there's precipitation, but it can tell if it's rain or snow. All right, then SLP. 088. This is another way to indicate pressure. It's not something that we use in the United States. And then T0283, 0222 is a further delineation of your temperature and dew point. So 28.3 degrees Celsius is your temperature and 22.2 is dew point. All right, so if you could decode that on your own, you're doing a great job, you're ahead of the game. And if not, then that's something you definitely need to work on. Number four is understanding the three definitions of nighttime. First definition 
of nighttime is sunset and sunrise. So what happens at sunset and sunrise is your position lights have to go on. The second definition of nighttime is evening civil twilight. This is about 30 minutes after sunset and before sunrise, but it depends on the angle of the sun below the horizon. So it's not exactly 30 minutes. At evening civil twilight, you can start logging night flight time, but you cannot log night landings. The final definition of nighttime is one hour past sunset and one hour before sunrise. And between these times, you can log your night landings for currency purposes. Finally, we have currency versus proficiency. The examiner on the check ride, they're trying to determine that you can make good decisions as the pilot in command of an aircraft, that you can go out and fly by yourself and you don't need an instructor on board to help you. So let's use the example of nighttime currency for landings. Let's say that 60 days ago, you did your nighttime currency. You got your three takeoffs and landings to a full stop at night. So you are legal to take passengers at night. However, if it's been 60 days and you just got your private license recently, you don't have that many hours, you might want to go and do a refresher flight because although you're legal, you may not be proficient and therefore you may not be safe to do that flight. So understanding the difference there is very key. Just because it's legal does not mean that it's safe. So if you can communicate that on the check ride and show the examiner that you can make really good decisions, then you're gonna do great on your check ride. If you guys have any questions, throw them down in the comments and I will try to answer every single one. Also in the description, there's a link to our study guide. It is free. All you gotta do is fill out your name and email and you get a free 18 page study guide that I made. I put a lot of work into it, not asking you to pay anything, just trying to help you guys out and get you past your check ride.